I'm on a flight from Tel Aviv, Israel to Bucharest, Romania, and the boy to see the refugee crisis that's happening at the Ukrainian border. So we're about to take off. The flight attendant just announced that face masks are recommended, but no longer mandatory. Well, that's the end of that. I'm glad we've gotten to this point. Okay, we are in Romania. It's cold. So here in Romania, the pandemic is officially over. And check this out. So in the airport, there are workers who are taking the stickers off the ground. Stickers that would tell people that they needed to stand six meters apart, whatever, they're being taken off. Okay, so that was really easy to get into the country. They didn't really ask any questions, just stamped me in. The border guards were not wearing masks. The people, the uh, workers at the airport are not wearing masks. The flight attendants were not wearing masks. It's very interesting to see because after two years of traveling in the pandemic, finally it seems like this thing is finally over and the government of Romania declared last week that the pandemic is over in this country. So hopefully we're headed into better times. Okay, so I'm outside the airport and my hotel is in walking distance. It's like a three minute walk. No need to take a taxi, I'm just gonna head right over there. And five minutes later. Good morning from Bucharest, Romania. I've been in this hotel for like nine hours. I'm pretty sure I have not slept, not even one minute. I don't know why, but my body's all messed up from so much traveling and jet lag, I could not sleep. At least I got a little bit of work done and I got a shower. I made my bed to the best of my ability. Now I'm gonna pray Davan Chakras really quickly and I have to run to the airport because my flight's in about an hour and five minutes. Thank God it's only a five minute walk from here and it's a domestic flight, so hopefully I'll be fine. <laughs> Okay, so I made it to the airport, the flight is boarding. What's crazy is that literally 20 minutes ago I was in my hotel room and now I'm already past security. We're boarding the plane now. Um, my only regret is that I didn't stay in bed longer because the airport is so close to the terminal that I literally could have just probably tried to sleep for another 10 or 15 minutes, but uh, it wasn't meant to be. So we're getting on the plane, it's a small one, there's a couple other Jews here. Also... Thank you. Bye, thank you. Okay. Next stop, Yas, Romania. I almost missed a step over there. Okay. So the rabbi is supposed to be waiting for me here and you are about to hear a very sad but also a very beautiful story. So I've seen a lot of small airports in my day but this one takes the cake. I mean this is the arrivals terminal, you come in from that door, there's the bags and then you go right out that door. So this one is tiny tiny tiny. Okay, so I'm here in the car with Rabbi Shalom Gopin. Shalom Gopin from? From Lugansk, Kiev, Yasi today. So <laughs> Lugansk is in Ukraine. Yeah. And the Rabbi is here. I noticed his license plate is also from Ukraine. So you drove the car? Yeah, sure, yeah. From Ukraine to here. When did you run away from Ukraine? I'm gathered two weeks ago. Two weeks today ago. with the start of the war. So as soon as the war started, yeah. it came. And uh, you came with your whole family? Yeah, not you all, the old children were in Israel now. Not all of them, I see children this here. Yeah, yeah, Four this children, yeah. okay, and and your community also? Yeah. Not, community, uh, one here, one in the other place, it's war, you cannot take the, the, the communities, you know what's in war? It's I don't real know. war. Real war. You come with the money, you don't know what to do, to which to right, to left, to which pass, to the car, to the train, to the play. 
the study it's a bit sugar so it's uh, homeless today everybody else so so what happened you came you just you, is there a border with Ukraine and Romania yeah okay so you came through the border Did they let you in no problem yeah because I'm Israeli guy you're an Israeli citizen okay so you'll be able to get in and then and then what I hear that there's a lot of people a lot of Jewish people who are here now and you're taking care of them yeah We have arrived at this hotel compound. What's interesting is that a lot of these cars parked here are from Ukraine. So this one has a Ukrainian license plate. That one is a Ukraine license plate. And this one is a Ukraine license plate. This one too has a license plate from Ukraine. People literally took what they could, got into their cars and ran. And they made it here. The rabbi has a similar story that he's gonna tell us later. We'll get to that. But one thing I wanna be very clear about is that I don't wanna get into the politics of this war and what's going on between Russia and Ukraine, that's not what I'm here to do. I want to show you the human side. I want to show you the people, the regular people, who are being affected by what's happening in the region. So we've been driving for about a half hour and now we're at this place. I'm, I understand it's a kind of hotel or resort and this is where the refugees, some of them, are staying. The rabbi is putting them up here. So how many people are here, Rabbi? I think 50 60 people. I cannot 50 or 60 sure. people. He doesn't know exactly because, because every day is changing. Change, people are coming yeah. and going. Yeah. Let's see what's happening here. English. <laughs> Okay. This is uh, the very rich Romanian guy talking in Hebrew good. Really? This is his sister. Do they speak Spain? English? Ah, speak English, maybe a little English. A little bit. So you guys work at the hotel? I know English. I'm not sure. Do you work here? Yes. Do you special for us. It doesn't feel wrong in this place. It came wow. special for us to help us, to make a nice Shabbos. You can see the... Let's make shots, shabbat from coffee. No, thanks. Okay, so we are entering. This is the makeshift synagogue for the time being. This is a Torah. Sefer Torah. That uh, they have with them. So that they can pray. Ah. It's not our people. Okay. It's not our people. So here we are. This is some of the food that has arrived. So where did this food come from, Rabbi? From Israel. Oh, from Israel. Who, 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 who brought it? Bucharest. Uh, uh, what about the Jewish organization, Lubavitch? Uh, they sent the food? Yeah, sure. And the Latin to say one more tomorrow, I think. Wow. And this is enough for everyone? It's not enough. It's, it's until they finish it. We need, we need, they need one something like that. Every like ton, ton right. uh, uh, kosher food from Israel. Right. So now on Tuesday you say there's going to be more? Yeah, one more ton. Okay. And who's cooking? The, um, the, the cook that I found a volunteer who came from Israel. Those people in the kitchen, yeah. they're also cooking. Yeah. So you had to make the hotel kosher? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. The rabbi I met today and the one who's showing me around, he is a shliach of Chabad. He's an emissary of the Lubavitcher Rabbi. For those of you who are not familiar, Lubavitch is an organization 
the largest organization of Jewish rabbis and leaders around the world. They have over 5,000 rabbis stationed in different places all around the world in over 100 different countries. And the goal is to keep Jews connected to their Judaism wherever it may be. There are Chabad chapters in places you would not believe. And this rabbi is a rabbi of Chabad who was living in Ukraine. He is now pretty much in exile with a bunch of people from his community and people he doesn't even know who is helping anyway. They've taken over this hotel compound. And it's, it's just, it's, it's really, really rough to see. Like, I travel a lot, right? After a couple of days away from home, it's like you just want to, even if you're having a good time on vacation or whatever, you just want to be back in your own bed, at your own kitchen table, eating your own food, in your own comfort zone. And these people have no idea if their homes are even standing still. Their homes could have been bombed. And even if their homes are standing, it's not safe to go back. And they have no idea when they're going to get home again. And it's just really, really sad to see. And I can really empathize with them. Okay, so I'm just sitting down now with a couple of Jewish people who ran away from Ukraine. We're going to hear a little bit about their stories and uh, how they ended up here and what's going on in their lives. Мы приехали, у нас дом находится, дача находится с под Гастомеля, это где-то километров 15 от Киева, 10 километров от Киева. When and why did you feel the need to run away? Почему вы решили, что вы должны уехать оттуда? Объясню, сначала мы думали, что это все закончится там за 3-4-5 дней. Okay, so basically what I'm hearing is that uh, this couple, they're, you know, they actually were doing well in Ukraine. They had a nice house outside the city, and when things started going bad and the, the war started, they went to this house out of the city where they, they had this house out of the city, and they went there because they figured that outside of the city it'll be safe, it'll be quiet. What they didn't know was that there's an airport uh, very close to their home, which the Russians wanted that airport, and they there was a lot of fighting in the area, and they were home, stuck in their house for a full week, no electricity, no water, and um, and bombs raining over their heads. And it was a terrible situation, so they had to get out. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So when we the So there was things got so bad there was no water that they literally had to take snow and melt it in order to have water to drink. To drink. Yeah, to drink to some. And to, to wash themselves. Yeah. Well, that's crazy. That's that's a bit crazy. Yeah. yeah. This, this situation. Okay. So first of all, um, they they had milk. Yeah. Okay. So they had a little bit of milk in the house for the baby, but there was no way to heat it because there was no electricity anymore. They literally had to go outside and collect wood, start a fire to be able to heat up the milk. Then things just got out of hand. They couldn't continue living this way. So after five or six days, they noticed a pattern. Okay. <laughs> um, they noticed a pattern that the Russian army was shelling the area that they were in every day at the same time. So after five or six days, they realized that at a certain point, and it's pretty much the same time every day, at a certain point, the shelling would stop. It's okay, it's okay, let the baby make noise. They realized that the shelling would stop at a certain point. So after they figured out the pattern of when the shelling was happening, they got into their car and left. And they came here to... Not to you. Where did they go first? Oh. Ask him. Потом, куда мы поехали? Потом, uh, потом мы решили ехать и поехали через Бучу. Oh, а, да. Связи не было, мы не знали. Там стоят наши войска или русские войска, и мы выехали, и на нас ехали танки. And so he just said that um, he first of all he's asking that anybody who can help should please help because there are, you know people are literally stuck in Ukraine and all over Europe now. As refugees, they said that they were living under shelling and bombings. Bombs do not discriminate, they just land places and kill people. And um, whoever can help the situation would be much appreciated, number one. Number two, I want to thank all those who have already helped and who have sent help and sent money and sent food and sent aid. It's really appreciated. Um, can you ask them 
do they think they'll be able to go home anytime soon? Вы думаете, что когда-то пройдет время, они уйдут домой? So I asked them if they think they're going to be able to go home anytime soon, and he said he hopes that um, the Ukrainians will be able to win their land back, and you know, and the Russian army will leave. And he believes that's going to happen. He said, I cannot make any plans. I don't know what's going to happen today. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. I don't believe what happened yesterday. We're just waiting. And it's, I mean, for a human being to just be in that situation where they don't know what's going to be and when it's going to be is very, very tough. So apparently this whole complex was not enough place. So they even have a house across the street that also they rented. And they put families in there. Rabbi is going to show me around. Oh, what a cute little doggy. Hello. Hello. Здравствуйте. No. Он, wow. Это наш... This is the people. But how you came? Откуда вы приехали? Запорожье. City in Ukraine. Запорожье. It's called. These people came. This ladies came, this all wow. people were there. How, how old is this woman, can I ask? Сколько лет, уважаемые? Сейчас переведу на английский, 86. 86. Wow. See, could you imagine that? People are 86 years old, and they have to run. Like, unbelievable, unbelievable. It's terrible. Yeah. Wow. Okay, good luck. Rabbi, you know these people at the No, I don't know these people. The people ask me the rabbi from the project call me. I have a group for 15, I don't remember how much, 12, 15 people. If you have a place, I'm saying let's sure, let's send. Wow, I don't know why. That's crazy. So I, I thought when he introduced me to all these people that he knows them. He said he doesn't even know who they are. They just people called and said, Can we come? Come. Uh, it's okay? Yeah, you can go in. Go, go. Oh, what's his name? Archie. Arch. Arch. Arch or Archie? Arch. Hi! <laughs> I don't have any food, I'm so sorry. No, I don't know. So, where are they from? Uh, also the part, same group, the uh -huh. other from the program. Wow. Svion yesterday, first time go to the shul, Italia. Wow. First time in his life? Yeah, I think first time he was in the shul. So these people are Jewish and it's their first time, now that they're here and they're, they're in, you know, they have refugee status and they're away from home, it's actually the first time they ended up in a synagogue on Shabbat. So. I, I wouldn't say it's a good thing that they're not home, but now that they are not home, they're reconnecting with their roots, yeah. which is also very interesting. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. So, Rabbi, when, honestly, when I came here, I thought that I'm going to see people sleeping outside and, you know, not taking showers and no food. And it looks like they're living a, a good life. If I may say so, in the sense that they're refugees, but they're they're in a, in a hotel, and they have hot water, and they're able to, to eat normally and whatever. So although they're away from home and it's a terrible situation, they're lucky to have an organization like you and Chabad, who is uh, helping them live as much of a normal life as possible. Uh, are you? It's real. It's like that because I think the refugees it's mean they know what they know what what's going to be tomorrow. Uh -huh. No, today we must to live good. Wow. Tomorrow, this is the this principle. That's that's how this, you see refugees. Is, yeah, sure, yeah. So, refugees so, are refugees must be. I don't know what to be tomorrow. I don't know how to go. No, right now, it must be everything like home. This is our principle over there. This because this we have a good fit, a good place, a good hotels. We take a care for good everything. Rabbi. A good rabbi, yeah. A good Lubavitch, the rabbi. That's not the rabbi's teacher to give to, to to give to everybody the maximum we can. Okay, so dinner is about to be served. And these uh, Romanian people who speak Hebrew are preparing it. Hello again. Hello. 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 Are you eating? Yes. So you're going to eat the bread? Yes. 
וואו, יפה. Okay, so a family just showed up, new refugees in the house. With, and they brought dogs. B9. I put this family. B9? Yeah. Okay. I give it the paper, right? Okay, so the rabbi is taking their bags and he's gonna get them situated in a room. This is happening all day, all night. Even on Shabbos, people are arriving and the rabbi is just putting them up and getting them taken care of. So, um, can I ask you what your name is? My name is Irina. Irina, and this is? Yava. Yava. And you guys came from where? From Zaporizhia. Zaporizhia. How far is that from like Kiev? Uh, uh, 800 kilometers. 800 kilometers. Wow. So, um, was, there, was there bombing in your city? Yeah. Yes. So you were there then? Yes. Yeah. What was it like? Scary. <laughs> Scary. Yeah, I could imagine. So you just, how did you get to Romania? We uh, uh, sit in the uh, car. Mm. We traveled from uh, Zaporizhia to <clears throat> Uman. It's Uman. Uman. Yes. Then we, we, then we uh, came to Vinitsa. Uh, then to, we came to Kishinev. Then we came to Yasi. And so we here. How many days have you been traveling? Uh, About a week. But wow. a week, the, 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 uh, nine March. March, we, March. Nine March. March, we came from the Parisia. So now, for the first time in a bunch of days, you're going to be relaxing and yeah. settling down. That's wonderful. And you brought the dogs with you? Yes. Yeah. So the, three dogs. <laughs> three dogs. Three so dogs. who this is? What's her name? Or it's his? Pixie. Pixie. Pixie is the mother? No, no, no. no. Oh. Mother Ooh. here. This is the it's mother. Sherry. 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 Where's the other one? Oh my goodness, that is a cute This purse. is his son, Tommy. Atom, Tommy. And they're all, they all ran away with you? Yes. yes. Were, were the dogs afraid when they heard the bombs? Yeah. Wow. Okay, he why put, don't you... He put in the back... How to say? He jumped, he he jumped, jumped uh, right into the back and uh, came with us. Uh, he, was, so he was excited to get away from there? Yeah. Okay, so please go, go inside and Thank make you. yourself comfortable. Thank you. Okay, so this is my friend Mark. How old are you, Mark? Uh, I am 15. 15? Wow. Yeah. I thought you were older. You, you're tall, you're a big guy. Same. So, where are you from? Uh, I'm from Ukraine. You're from Ukraine, right? We're in Ukraine. Uh, sorry, repeat please. Where in Ukraine are you from? Ah, Sumy. Sumy. Okay. How, like, we're in, in Ukraine, is that near Kiev or it's far away from Kiev? Uh, sorry. Is it near Kiev? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah? Okay. And, um, what happened, uh, to your family? Like, were um, you there when the bombs started falling? Uh, we heard, uh, them. You heard this, the bombs? Uh, yeah, yeah, but, uh, I didn't see it. Right, but it was in, it was in your city, like, in your neighborhood. Yeah, 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 um... Uh, around the city, uh, the nearest, uh, like uh, Akhtirka, Lebedin, it was uh, bombing. Uh, but uh, my city, uh, Sumy, uh, the center, um, not so much, but I heard. Right. So. No, not so much in um, in my hood, uh, like uh, like that. Right. Okay. So. When did you, when did your family decide that they needed to leave Ukraine? Uh, decide um, um, uh, at uh, nine uh, March. Nine March 9th. Yeah, yeah. 
Okay. Uh, it, uh, they, uh, no, my f my family uh, decides decided decided to leave the country very quickly because uh, uh, country. Again, so your your mother's friend. Uh, mother's friend uh, Oksana proposed to leave the country uh, because he uh, she she because she has a car. A car. car. She had a car. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. So you got you all went into her car. Uh, yeah, by uh, we went uh, from the country by uh, her car. And you drove to uh, to um, Moldova. Uh, no, 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 to um, Chernovtsi. Okay. Uh, it's near to um, Rum Romania. Okay. Romania. Uh, and uh, the next day we um, cross the. The border. Romania border, yeah. right into yeah, Romania. Yeah. So you crossed from Ukraine to Romania, and how did you end up here? Do you know this rabbi? Uh, no, I uh, have not seen uh, he, him before. Uh, sorry for my language. No, it's great. You uh, you don't know who he is. You uh, don't know him. No, I don't know, but uh, she is a kind person. So how did you find out about this? Uh, that you can. How did you find out that you can come here? Um. Our uh, our rebbe uh, said that uh, we need to come here to sleep. Oh, and cool! Rest. So, so one second. So the rabbi from your city yeah, told yeah. you that you can come here, and yeah. there's another rabbi who's going to take care of you. Uh, yeah, um, uh, yeah, yeah. You think you'll be able to go home? <clears throat> yeah, yeah. When? Uh, when? No, not tomorrow, uh, but uh, maybe. Um, mm, Till year or two. A year or two? No. Wow. Let's go in and eat dinner. Yes? Yes. Okay. So everyone's eating. Thank God. So. so everyone's eating dinner in the dining room. I'm going to the car now because I brought some stuff with me from Israel. I never like to come empty handed. So I reached out to my good friends at Mint Capital and we bought a ton of chocolate, a lot of chocolate to give out to the people who are here. You know, it's not easy being away from home, refugee. At least we could try to make it a little bit sweeter with some chocolate. So we're going to be handing out chocolate. Thank you Mint Capital for sending the chocolate. So, chocolate. Okay, thank Let's bring more. Chocolate? Hey. Mm -hmm. 